Uh, I was invited to give a short talk, and this will also be a short talk of about 15 minutes uh, at the Vermont, at the uh, New Hampshire Hanover Rotary Club, and I'm trying to just go through some of the facts I know about Vermont Yankee in a kind of a simple way. <coughs> First thing, the background. Energy bought Vermont Yankee in 2002 for $180 million. Energy has bought a lot of nuclear plants. One of the things that's happened since Three Mile Island is that professional companies have bought up the nuclear plants from the utility companies and turned them into merchant plants. That is, they sell the electricity to the grid for whatever they can get, the most they can possibly get. That's their business. If you divide the capacity of the plant into the money they invested, they got a good deal. 35 cents a watt of capacity compared to four or five dollars that you'd have to pay today if you were going to buy a new plant. So it could be a real money maker. The only problem is, and here's the money in fact, uh, it generates about 600 megawatts of power and if you just multiply that by 365 days, by 24, by four cents, maybe they get five cents, you are got to see that if they operate 90% of the time, which they beat, they're going to get $200 million in revenue easily. So it's not bad, uh, $180 million investment, $200 million in revenue, that's, that's a good business case. <laughs> good. Uh, they got expenses, uh, not, but not bad. On the other hand, what if uh, that capital cost has to be spread over the lifetime of the plant? And the time they bought it, the lifetime of the plant was 10 years. It was, they bought it in 2012, they wanted to go to 2012, so they want a 20-year extension. Now that's not unusual. All the plants today were built with 60-year uh, designs and licensed for 40 years, renewable for 20, provided everything uh, worked out well. So, uh, what is this thing? It's what's called a boiling logger reactor. The, the, the big pressure vessel has in it the fuel rods that become critical, creating a lot of neutrons and heat and so on. And the water circulates through it. Uh, some of the, sometimes it bubbles a little bit. It's all kept under pressure. It's about 60 atmospheres of pressure. And that steam that comes out of here eventually uh, drives a, a turbine that runs a generator that delivers power to the grid. The output of this system has to be cooled to be changed from steam back into water and pumped into the reactor vessel again. That's a closed system. And there are radioactive materials in that water because it's going right by all the fuel rods and uh, so on. The water out here that comes from the river or the cooling tower uh, just is used to condense that internal water. There's no connection between the two water circuits. So this is just plain fresh river water. So that's, that's called a boiling water reactor. Now, it's cooled in the winter by river water, but in the summer, uh, if you were to cool with river water, the temperature would go up enough that they would be concerned about fish life. So. They don't. So in the summer, they use the cooling towers that they are over here that evaporate water to, to cool it. So the utilities would rather use river water but because uh, it's cheaper. But this plant can do either or both in combination. So now this doesn't have that sort of hyperbolic shape of the cooling tower you're all used to, but it's the same thing. That's the way it works. Down here is the dam and the power plant that was there originally. There was a, a power plant there long before Super, I mean, long before Vermont Yankee's power plant. And since all the grid connections were there, it made sense to build the nuclear power plant here too. Now, some bad news happened and a bad mistake in 2007. The cooling tower collapsed. That's the water that was circulating back and forth to cool off the, uh, the condenser. And what we said, bad news. 
it made people suspicious that the maintenance of the plant was out of the stuff. And it would make me suspicious. Um, the plant says, well, there's no, it wasn't a safety issue. It had nothing to do with the nuclear circuit. But it just makes you suspicious about maintenance in general. Uh, most recently, there's a big trivium deal that's uh, overcome everybody's uh, memories about the plant. Now, a little exit sign, not these, but a lot of the ones you see uh, are arranged so that they are work in a power fitting. And the way they do that is by having a radioactive source that uh, creates little beta particles, little electrons, that illuminates the sun, much like a fluorescent light bulb is illuminated. But the source is there, and it's uh, tritium. They, they buy it from power plants or other places, so they put it in there. About one curie, which is about the same amount of radiation you get from a gram of radium. So, but the newspapers wouldn't ever report one gram, one curie. They all, they have a different unit. They say, it's that many picocuries. <laughs> so that's how many picocuries there are in an exit sign. Now that's what, 10 to the 12th, I guess. Now, just to get calibrated a little bit, a human body has a radioactive unit about 100,000 picocuries. That's from uh, certain isotopes of potassium that are naturally occurring that or in bananas you eat in the cells of your body and so on. So it, it's, it's there. It's, it's uh, a little bit radioactive. Not much. Now, that was 100,000. Then this hit the news. Uh, laboratory tests, uh, 17,000 picocuries per liter. Uh, Vermont Yankee was under the obligation to report to the uh, NRC any uh, monitoring of an excess of 20,000 picometers, but they reported this to them and to the press. So that, that started off the, the, uh, the row that now exists. The, um, again, is that a lot? Well, I don't know. If you drank water that's in the well of the test well of the plant only for a whole year, you increase your radiation dose one percent. So it wasn't that much. That's about the same extra radiation you get as you take an airplane trip because you're a little higher in the atmosphere and the cosmic rays aren't being filtered out. 